Hello there, you're watching New Vision TV News. My name is Lynn Komjisha. Thank you for joining us. First, the headlines. Uganda has today marked her 57th independence anniversary. And in more news around Uganda, Lango's pioneer bishop has died. South Sudan is renegotiating an oil deal with Khartoum. And in news around the world, Algerian police has thwarted a protest by students in the capital for the first time. In a special report tonight, we look at what took place in Sironko district during the 57th Independence Day celebrations. Hello there once again. Thank you for joining us. We come to you from the New Vision newsroom. We have news around Uganda, news around the East African region, news elsewhere in the world, as well as our special report. Now, today, Uganda celebrated its 57th independence anniversary in Sironko District at the Sironko District headquarters. The celebrations were presided over by His Excellency, the President of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, accompanied by the guest of honor, His Excellency, the President of Zimbabwe, Emerson Mnangagwa, and New Vision TV will, in tonight's special report, bring you what took place in Sironko District. Moving on, members of the Uganda's main opposition party, the Forum for Democratic Change, did not join the rest of the country to mark the 57th Independence Day celebrations. Led by the party, President Patrick uh, Muriat Oboe, leader of the opposition, Betty Awo Ochan, opposition chief whip Samu Junganda members, held their own independence celebrations at the party headquarters in Najanankumbi. Different from the past, Police did not foil the celebrations. Now, musician turned member of parliament Robert Chaglany, popularly known as Bobby Wine, this morning escaped from police at his home in Magere, Wakisa district, and went to the city center in Kampala. Police was deployed at his home in the wee hours of Wednesday night in order to block him from hosting his Independence Day concert at Busabala Beach, which he realized was canceled as he did his last rehearsals. On Tuesday, police announced the concert was canceled over security concerns. Now in Lira District, pioneer Bishop of Lango Diocese, province of the Church of Uganda, right Reverend Melchizedek Otim, has passed on at the age of 85. His passing was announced by his son, Francis Peter Ojede. He breathed his last at around 3 a.m. from the Uganda Heart Institute, where he was admitted. Born in 1934, Bishop Otim was elected the pioneer Bishop Lango Diocese in 1976 during the tenure of the late Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, Janan Lewum. We now take a look at news around the East African region. From South Sudan, it is renegotiating an oil deal with Khartoum as it will not meet the deadline to finish paying the three billion US dollars agreed as compensation for its secession from Sudan in 2011. The Petroleum Minister, our Daniel Chuang, said that the young nation had so far paid 2.4 billion US dollars as compensation to Sudan, but would not manage the remaining 600 million US dollars by December. And in Kenya, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission has launched a probe into ODM claims of rigging in the November 7th Kibra by-election. Uh, the IEBC chairman, Wafula Chebukat, said the commission has appointed an investigator to follow up on any allegations of malpractices in Kibra. Cheb Chebukati spoke today after meeting ODM officials who early demanded to be provided with a register of all in Kibra ahead of the by-election. Now for news making headlines around the world.
Algerian police prevented a weekly protest by students in the capital for the first time since an anti-regime movement took to the streets February. They forcefully barred access to a square in central Algiers and managed to disperse the demonstrators after several forays, making at least 14 arrests, according to an action group for the release of detainees. An Ethiopian airline jet made an emergency landing in Dakar with one of its engines on fire, though all 90 passengers and crew were unharmed, airport and airline officials said. The Boeing 767 aircraft had just taken off from Dakar airport en route to Addis Ababa when the pilot asked to return and make an emergency landing. Ethiopian Airlines confirmed one of its jets had suffered a mechanical problem and had safely returned to its point of departure without giving more details on the cause. We move on. Twitter has apologized after inadvertently using phone numbers and email addresses for advertising even though personal data was provided for account security. Twitter uses phone numbers and email addresses submitted to allow for account authentication were matched with advertisers' own data to enable targeted ads. None of the user data was shared with partners outside the company and it was unclear how many people were affected. Now, Ecuadorian protesters broke into the country's Congress building Tuesday as demonstrators uh, offer a fuel price hike introduced by President Lenin Moreno's government intensified. Demonstrators, many of them indigenous men armed with sticks and whips, surged through a security cordon. They rushed into the meeting room and occupied the podium but were soon evicted by security forces. We'll now take a break and return with news in business. Welcome back from that break. Let us look at news in business. In business tonight, medical doctors under the umbrella body Uganda Medical Association have supported the President's directive to close private pharmacies operating in public health facilities. Last week, President Yuri Museveni ordered the Minister of Health, Dr. Jane Rutha Cheng, to have all privately owned pharmacies in government health centers closed. He also issued a directive to the Minister of Public Service to conclude the issue of pay to government scientists and university teachers by moving them to the desired levels previously agreed. We speak to Paul Busharizi on this development. In the same directive, the president also, um, I think it was the same directive, he ordered uh, that their pay should be increased. Oh, yes. So a senior consultant was getting 17.5 million. I don't know what he was getting before. Mm -hmm. I think he almost, actually almost uh, more than doubled their pay. Mm. And the uh, doctor, the basic doctor, I think uh, entry-level doctor, was get, is going to get 5 million per month. Mm. So, and he made the argument that uh, we were allowing some of these things. Okay. That the, the thing of the pharmacies in the in drug shops in the hospital was one thing. There's a second thing he also said. He said um, we are. He is now. He wants to see doctors not moonlighting in the private sector. So ah. he also wants to see doctors. Uh, if you are in a pr public hospital like Mulago, don't have a clinic outside the hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so he says that uh, we allowed them to have clinics over the years because we couldn't pay them. But now, as we increasingly pay them, he's expecting doctors also to forego their clinics. Okay, so that's a good move. But what? The country is, um, has got a lot of things undone. Yeah, true. Sure. Unfortunately, we don't have the resources to, 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 to do all that we want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the last budget, um, in, the la in our current budget, mm -hmm. Uh, the government has earmarked 57,000 shillings per Ugandan for the whole year. So if you take the, if you take the total uh, health budget, which I think was about 2.3 trillion, and divide it by the number of Ugandans, 
you get 57,000. So it just shows you, it's just an indicator of how little the resources are. That's true. Uh, so, so, you know, you can argue about why didn't you do it sooner why, and why doesn't you do more, you know, <laughs> resources are just not there. So uh, that's been the challenge. But I think, uh, w w and the, the appear has been increasing over the years. So, yeah. you know, hopefully 10 years from now we'll look back and say those guys suffer, but now they don't anymore. <laughs> and I think that's one thing that the president has been juggling for, for a while. He says, look, let's build the infrastructure. Then we shall come and pay. I but uh, the tension has reached a point where I think now he, he has you to know, compromise. He says, "Let me pay the guys," yeah. but you see, there's the, 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 there's the, the, yes, the, 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 the facilities are not there. So it's 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 going to be for a while. It's always going to be a, a tricky situation. But well, it's a good start. It's a good start, no doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. <laughs>While gorilla tracking through this thick forest, tourists hike up the hut where they meet gorillas feeding their babies, some carrying them on their backs and the rest playing around. They live in groups called troops. These troops tend to be made of one adult male, multiple adult females and their offsprings. This is a protection model. Gorillas are friendly animals, so when you decide to bring the adventure at Bwind Impenetrable National Park, other activities you can indulge in are bike rides, camping, safari vacations, and so much more. Now for more Pearl of Africa stories, visit our website, which is newvision.co.ug forward slash Pearl of Africa. Our newspaper, The Sun Division, is also another home of adventures, so grab your copy every Sunday for Pearl of Africa stories. We now get into our special report. Today marks Uganda's 57th Independence Day anniversary and the celebrations took place in Sironko district in the eastern region of the country. By 8 a.m., Ugandans from far and beyond started gathering at Sironko district headquarters to celebrate the country's Independence Day anniversary. The president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Mnangagwa, was chief guest of the celebrations. Now, while addressing Ugandans, he revealed that when Uganda attained its independence in 1962, it inspired Zimbabweans to chase away colonial rulers in their country. Nangagwa also hopes to deepen his country's relations with Uganda. The theme for this year's celebrations is consolidation of national unity, security, freedom and prosperity. Now New Vision TV takes you through what happened in Sironko. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, together with his guest, and who is also our guest, His Excellency Imason Munangagwa, President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. When we got our independence in 1962, we were all excited. 
but maybe the foundation was not well laid, so there were disturbances. Therefore, between 1962 and 1986, we had a number of heads of state. But we thank God that from 1986, we have had steady progress. Heavenly Father, we come before you in thanksgiving for our country, the Republic of Uganda. We know that your many blessings to our country have come from your hand. I pray to the Almighty Allah, the Lord of the universe, to bless the people who struggled to see that Ugandans get their independence. I'm happy to be here to learn, consolidate, and deepen our relations between the Republic of Uganda and the Republic of Zimbabwe. Your independence inspired us in Southern Africa we were inspired that it was possible to remove colonial power from our countries when you became independent. We have been able to achieve minimum economic recovery, build a strong army, start the process of development, even address the issues of social services, while at the same time the population is increasing from 14 million in 1986 to now 42 million. We have been achieving these relatively high rates of growth in spite of lack of electricity, high, high costs, high transport costs from the ocean, where we spend $3,456 per 40-foot container by road instead of spending $1,800 per the same container by rail. And also, in spite of the high cost of money, i.e. the interest rates of the exploitative and economy distorting banks. Now that we have a bit of money, provided we budget properly, emphasizing production ahead of consumption, we concentrate on the three cost pushers, transport, electricity, and the cost of money. The answers for these cost pushers are cargo and even passengers to be transported by high-speed trains. Two, to provide adequate and cheap electricity for manufacturing and some aspects of services. And three, Uganda Development Bank, capitalized by government, providing low interest loans for manufacturing, hotels, tourism assets, and internal trade for local manufactured goods. On the side of agriculture, we need to address the issue of irrigation so as to stabilize agricultural production and utilize our, co our, cooperative adv our comparative advantage of abundant fresh water. We are also concentrating on tarmacking the roads leading to the oil areas to make it possible for the pipeline to be constructed. The NRM is absolutely sure that with these measures, the economy of Uganda will grow in double digits. I thank you again and wish you good luck.
mwanya la kimirimo Happy Independence Day to you all. And that was New Vision TV News. My name is Lynn Komjisha. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. I leave you with a fact file.